In today's video, we're gonna be talking about why it's important you start making changes now if you're insulin resistant. Because if you don't, it's eventually gonna to lead to diabetes, heart disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, or worse. Insulin resistance is a condition that is extremely widespread. However, it often goes undiagnosed until it progresses to other diseases. And knowing you're insulin resistant, it's good and it's bad. On one hand, it can be frustrating to learn that you're insulin resistant and that this is ultimately the cause of a lot of the symptoms and side effects you've been experiencing. But on the other hand, it's empowering because instead of doing these band-aid fixes, trying to treat symptoms, you can address the root cause and ultimately reverse it. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about seven diseases and conditions that insulin resistance can ultimately lead to if you leave it unaddressed. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Kate. I'm a certified health and nutrition coach. I post videos twice a week here on YouTube talking all things insulin resistance, sleep, weight loss, nutrition, and more. So if you're ready to take control of your metabolic health, make sure to click that subscribe button. And you can also find me on TikTok and Instagram where I share new posts every single day. Now, some of the diseases we're gonna be talking about today, you might already be aware that they are caused by insulin resistance, but some of the other ones might be more surprising. And especially if you're a woman, make sure to stick around until the end because number six might surprise you. Number one, type two diabetes. Now the relationship between insulin resistance and type two diabetes is probably the most clear out of everything we're gonna talk about today. Insulin is a hormone responsible for getting excess sugar from our blood to our cells. It acts as a key signal to our cells to let the glucose in. When we become insulin resistant, our cells become overwhelmed. They stop responding to the actions of insulin, they stop taking in glucose as they should, and more insulin needs to be released as a result. And this excess insulin is enough to keep your fasting blood sugar in check, to keep it within a healthy or normal range for years even. So your blood sugar might look normal, but your insulin will be high, and you're gonna reach a point where this excess insulin isn't able to keep up. That's when you start to see your fasting blood sugar creep up. That's when you're gonna get diagnosed with prediabetes and then eventually type two diabetes. Number two, metabolic syndrome. Now I know I said that the relationship between insulin resistance and type two diabetes might be the most clear cut, but this one's pretty close. Metabolic syndrome is diagnosed by having three out of five main symptoms a large waist circumference, high fasting blood sugar, high blood pressure, low HDL cholesterol, and high triglycerides, all of which are directly caused by insulin resistance. Metabolic syndrome literally used to be known as insulin resistance syndrome because like I said, all of these symptoms are caused by insulin resistance. So if you already know that you have metabolic syndrome, you're insulin resistant. Number three, cardiovascular disease. Insulin resistance is highly associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular disease. It is thought that high levels of circulating insulin, as is the case with insulin resistance, lead to inflammation and damage blood vessels directly. And we see this relationship pretty clearly with type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. Over 30% of people with type 2 diabetes have heart disease as well. Number four, obesity. Now, this one might sound similar to metabolic syndrome. A lot of people assume that if you have metabolic syndrome, you're also obese, but this isn't the case. The relationship between insulin resistance and obesity is actually a bit more complicated. It isn't entirely clear whether insulin resistance or obesity come first. While the two do often go hand in hand, it is possible to be insulin resistant without being obese and it's possible to be obese and not be insulin resistant. Both do contribute to one another and it becomes a bit of a vicious cycle, but it's hard to say which comes first. Number five, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. This is a condition where fat is stored around the liver, an area where it normally shouldn't be stored, and it leads to further liver damage down the track. 
and the accumulation of fat around the liver is caused by insulin resistance. Number six, polycystic ovarian syndrome, also known as PCOS. And this is the one I said that women might be surprised about. This condition affects one in 10 women of reproductive age worldwide, and it is the number one cause of female infertility. So many women, unfortunately, have PCOS, and it is directly related to insulin resistance. To be diagnosed with PCOS, you have to have two out of three main symptoms, an irregular period, high male hormones, such as testosterone, and ovarian cysts. And all three of these symptoms are caused by high insulin levels. High circulating insulin levels stop the body from converting testosterone into estrogen, which leaves you with high testosterone as a result. Symptom number one. Because there isn't this big spike in estrogen that's supposed to happen before ovulation, we don't ovulate, we don't have our period, which is symptom number two, and we're left with cysts in the ovaries as a result. Symptom number three. Now, I know that a lot of women think that PCOS is a condition that can only be managed, but that's not the case. If you address insulin resistance, you can reverse insulin resistance and PCOS. Number seven, Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's is sometimes referred to as type three diabetes, and that alone should be enough to signify the relationship. It's called this because insulin dysregulation in the brain is thought to cause dementia. A large meta-analysis found that those with type 2 diabetes were over 60% more likely to develop dementia than those without it. And those are seven diseases and conditions that can be caused by insulin resistance if you don't address it. Now that was a pretty short list. There are a lot more <laughs> diseases and conditions that can stem from insulin resistance, but I think we covered a good few of them today. Insulin resistance really is the root cause of so many health ailments that we struggle with today. Now, like I said earlier in the video, it can be reversed. I'm not gonna get too much into that in today's video. I'm gonna link a video up above on how to reverse it. The changes you make to reverse it, they need to be made to your diet and your lifestyle, but they don't need to be big. You don't need to go on a huge crash diet. Small changes add up. The video that I just linked above, I think it goes over 10 or 11 things you can do to improve insulin sensitivity and ultimately reverse it. And if you can even do just one or two of these, it's gonna make a difference. Of course, the more you can do, the better, but small changes, they add up, they're gonna make a difference. And I'm also gonna say that I have a seven day insulin resistance masterclass that kind of condenses all the information you need and makes it really approachable. That masterclass also includes a seven day meal plan and you get to work with me through a Facebook group. So I'm gonna link that up above if you wanna check it out. If you're looking for a bit more guidance and support, I recommend <laughs> checking that out. If you're looking for more guidance and support, then this program is definitely for you. But anyways, let me know in the comments down below if you or anyone you know has these diseases and conditions we spoke about today and if you knew they were related to insulin resistance. I love chatting with you guys in the comment section and hearing your experiences and your results when you start making changes. So tell me your success stories if you've already gotten started. If you did enjoy this video, you might also enjoy my video on how to improve insulin sensitivity, which I mentioned earlier. You can check it out here. If you wanna catch up on my latest upload, you can find it here. And if you wanna check out my coaching programs, such as my insulin resistance masterclass, you can find those here. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.